hospitals were very low and couldn't have made the children sick or the teenagers sick. But they were failing to monitor the AEM emissions from the nearby tower, which um, you could see it in the background. And this would have interacted with the power line frequency. Yes, right. And um, an electrical engineer has been helping me. It's called Dr. Kudamalitis, and he says each technology multiplies the effect. And one more additional te um, frequency might be the last straw to bake the camel's back. So I guess those kids also had cell phones and all the other things. And if they were in the houses underneath the pylons and the AM was coming in the window from the nearby AM tower as well as them using all their technical equipment, um, they were probably getting a pretty good whammy of everything. So you're suggesting that if your child has much higher risk from harm, if, if they're in a schoolroom near cell towers with Wi-Fi's and the you know Wi-Fi's in the classroom, smart meter on the wall, lots of computers, cell phones, etc. This is this is really exposing our youngsters, isn't it? Well, the independent scientific research is showing that each of the above mentioned has the potential to cause harm, and when you mix them all up, the effect must be amplified many, many times. Mm. Uh, space, particularly, it causes oscillation. It's, it's, a, it's a pulsing, different pulsing frequencies. And there was an interesting New York court case a long time ago uh, where the scientist, I think his name was, was Bosch, was presenting evidence to show how the power that they'd increased over the pa in the power lines over the children's school would cause the children's brain to oscillate. He put a metronome on a, on a, um, on a, a, a ledge and he worked it backwards and forwards to show the judge how the backward and forward effect on the brains of the children would oscillate. Um, and the judge awarded the school millions in damages. Hmm. And of course, if you had um, um, pylons, cell phones, tower, Wi-Fi, or smart meters all in the same area, that would be jumbling the children's brains up even more. It jumbles up the whole body, but um, particularly seems to affect the, the, the brain. And some people are more susceptible than others. Yes, Dr. Aidy and Dr. Tra refer to the fact that children and old people uh, will be more susceptible. And Dr. Tra suggests women are more vulnerable due to their hormones. He says it's quite extraordinary how in most areas it's the women. And I have actually noticed that out at the farm. Um, and I also found that the mares, the breeding mares, were much more affected than the goldings. But I noticed that the male animals, such as bulls and stallions, became very aggressive and changed personality when exposed to the frequencies. And when we took them away, um, they became quite normal and quiet and not aggressive. So that's pretty scary. Well, yes, that's quite a lot to think about in view of the increased violence in our schools, where many emissions are utilised. There was increased violence here. They're actually when talking about that on the radio today. They were saying their children have got weapons. They're actually using weapons. And I know lots of teachers at schools are actually very frightened now because they say the children are so aggressive. And so many of these schools have actually got cell phone towers in New Zealand. I don't know whether they are permitted in the United States, but they're actually permitted to have the school cell towers in the school grounds, um, there are obviously a lot on sports fields, but then um, the children have got all these, this other technological equipment as well. Mm -hmm. People are so married to their cell phones now, do you think that'll ever change? <laughs> oh, I don't, I, I think that the important thing is that what's actually happening is a lot of them are texting, which is, is fantastic, I mean they probably, they probably end up with no thumbs, I don't know, but um, I think that that helps a lot. Um, if, if any parent is actually worried, I'd just suggest a film called Disconnect, um, particularly for men who, in particular, seem to be married to their cell phones, you know, businessmen, depending what, you know, particularly in real estate or whatever their business mm. are. And there's a very, very good book written by an ex Motorola man who's actually dead now, and he developed a brain tumour, and it's titled Cell Phone Roulette by Robert Kane, and that's very well written. So anybody who's concerned, that those are good places to start. Excellent. To find out a bit more about what the effects are, and it's um, just not whistleblowers like me talking off the top of my head. It's actually, you know, it's, it's the scientists who've given us that information, or people who've been affected, like the late Robert Kane, um, who just actually want to warn people because they don't want them to suffer how they have. Well, you know, Penny, the, the links uh, that you have given us are impeccable, um, and as they should be. You know, we're long past the conspiracy here. Uh, the science is behind this, and pe people need to um, 
take a take a good look. You know, protecting their environment, their children from increased magnetic harm, electromagnetic harm. Yes, I think I was reading somewhere about the the billions that um, United Kingdom actually makes out of selling the three G, just the three G frequency. That's billions. So they're actually protecting themselves and. Um, that actually helps you to understand when industry and government says no harm can occur from exposure within the U United States New Zealand standard, that they might have their own agenda. And um, it's actually quite sad because in countries that we all say, oh, you know, they don't have a very good um, democracy, countries like Russia, China, Switzerland, Belgium, they have a much more stringent standard for safe exposure, but they also have modern technology, but industry is made to reduce the emissions and to put towers in safer places because they value their children. I mean, the children is the seed corn of all of our countries to actually mm. damage our children in the long term. Not only is going to increase our um, um, you know, responsibilities for the health departments, but it's also going to take away the potential of our children for the future because it's jumbling up their brains. Sometimes I think that this is all part of the agenda, Penny. Now I you mentioned you mentioned you last right. <laughs> you think you mentioned think last so. week that you're currently in um, high court action for negli negligence against the radio network. How is that going, Penny? Well, it's not going very well at the moment. Um, uh, Dr. Trower talks about the immense problems facing people like me trying to get some compensation for the devastation these emissions have caused. Um, and in the Aurora Radio Network case that I'm currently in a nuisance and negligence for, um, and the High Court's let me proceed, they knowingly caused harm as they increased the power many times after they knew the cluster harm only occurred with the frequencies focused. Mm. And this increase in power meant the sick people got sicker. So when you're talking about things being intentional, I think that was very deliberate because then they're less likely to be able to have the energy or be able to, you know, get the resources to stop the transmissions. Um, for me, it's doubly hard to run our court case because of financial pressure. As for almost 20 years, I've been unable to live at my home or run my business, and that's because of the radio frequency emissions affecting the animals, the people, the plants, everything, and it forced us to evacuate our farm in 1996, and we haven't been able to live there since. But these, this is, I think, I mean, I see this problem as actually going to be happening with um, landowners whose land is fracked. They'll be told by the industry, oh, there's absolutely no problem at all, and there'll be farmers, and industry will come in to do their mineral fracking, and then when the water and soil is harmed so badly, and the farmers will not be able to farm their land, they won't be able to drink their water, the animals won't be able to drink the water, then they won't have any income. And as with me, it makes it even more of a David Goliath legal action, um, as industry will have all the money to, 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 to fight you and, and, and to you know, gobble you if any objectors up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just um, the tobacco industry did exactly the same. And the same's going to occur with fracking, as far as we can see, unless we can stop it. Um, but I think the worst thing about fracking, the tobacco industry, you know, the people smoke, they die. Well, we've got lots of people anyway, so we've got a few spares. Um, <laughs> the radio frequency, I mean, the same thing, you know, we've got a few spares with the people. But when you look at fracking, the worst thing about that is that the worst effects of it are probably irrecoverable for, for generations. Mm. Um, so it's 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 very difficult. Well, this um, this this um, you know issue alone, fracking, Max Egan uh, said that this would be the issue that would pull the world together. So who said you know, that? We're beginning to see this. Max Egan, who is a big voice yeah. down under, he's Australian. Yeah. Uh, and he has been talking about the fracking for a long time now, Penny. I will send you some of his work. Amazing, amazing. Man. I haven't fact, seen we'll... that. No, I haven't. I have seen quite a Just because, um, I mean, I haven't sort of come into, it hadn't come into my, under my radar until about a month ago. And then when I saw it, I just couldn't believe what I was actually looking at. Um, well, he's been warning us for... For, for for a long, long time now, uh, Australia is under the same attack, obviously. Australia is probably not quite so vulnerable as we are. The reason why we're so vulnerable is because we are so seismically um, active anyway. And so countries in the world that have actually um, not earthquake-prone 
have been experiencing earthquakes. So what happens when they actually do it in a country as shaky as New Zealand? I mean, it, this is the terrifying thing. I mean, having seen well, what happened... Well, for us it is, but I mean, it's, mm. it, it, at, the, at the end of the day, it's destructive on any level, and, and totally regardless agree of whether, with you. Totally whether, agree whether with Australia you. have are seismically active or not, they are still being... Um, you know, attacked on the same sort of level. Well, uh, Penny, it's been lovely to talk to you today. Folks, you're listening to Revolution Radio. This is uh, Geo Up, Over and Down Under. We will be having Penny on frequently now to keep us in touch with what is happening in Christchurch, electromagnetic frequencies, fracking, oil industries. Penny, what we I'd thank like you. to say, Rose, before you yes. say goodbye... Um, I would actually like to say um, we need to make people really aware that um, the control of the global power structures, the only way we're actually going to be able to alter that is for the global community of people who are obviously interested in, in or you wouldn't be listening to this program, and to interact with one another via the technological revolution that we've actually got, and to share the word with as many people as possible. Um, to try and see if, 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 if what we're doing can actually make a difference against these very, very powerful corporations who have all the monetary. Maybe we can just use the word. Mm. Thanks. All right, my dear. Thank you very much for joining us Thanks. here today. Bye. Bye-bye, Penny. <laughs> 